Here is one of the wings. Um, I'm not going to sugarcoat this. These are a pain in the neck. Um, they, they come in three pieces, so you have to um, hook up this piece and this piece. They have to uh, line correctly with the angle. Um, there is kind of a guide on the inside of the wing <clears throat> where you can adjust the angle. You can make sure it's matching with the inside part. Uh, that helps a little bit. Um, I've already gone over these with uh, putty probably about four or five times and they're still not 100% so there's still some some imperfections in here and these parts uh, where they join they're not exactly matching up so I don't even think on the real model they match perfectly but um, I'm trying to fill in these parts uh, just to make them look cleaner and I've done this a couple of times and I'm just kinda of going over it with uh, with putty and, and then sanding and then um, checking it and then doing it again on the inside I labeled this is a starboard wing so the seams on the inside what I'll do there is I'm going to fill that with uh, with canopy glue and um, that seam should be nice and clean I don't need to putty that would be a major hassle to get putty in there and then try and um, get it all out and make it look good so I'm just going to use um, a bead of um, canopy glue in there and let that dry and then I'll begin to paint so it's coming along the other wing is is same same status I have to you know work on it and get, get it to the point where it's ready for paint but it's not right now um, I also have to add some parts to this that uh, are missing uh, maybe some detail parts but it should look cool I think I got the angle right I'm kind of working on the wings while I'm working on the cockpit uh, because I need to design parts for the cockpit and it's just taking me a while to figure out uh, all the parts that I had to put in there alright I kinda of changed my mind on these wings uh, I was gonna just run glue in this channel here but on second thought um, I'm afraid that over time gravity's going to do its job and and the wings might sag or something. So I have some of this thin uh, it's brass piping. So I put uh, I ran a, a brass pipe through the top and bottom where it's going to join all three pieces of the wing, and I'm going to glue this in here, and then I'm going to uh, put the the uh, can of glue over that, so you'll hide this tube. But it's in there just to support the you know support the wings. Um, also, what I did was to support the wings to the sh ship itself. I actually put in some uh, metal piping, and the way I did that was I had cut pieces to the length I thought was sufficient, you know, to support the the wing, and then I used a bit. Um, this is like a diamond bit. Um, that I used in my drill press and it was the same diameter as the tube so um, I kind of just drilled a hole into the wing into the resin about half an inch maybe a little more and then the tubing fit right in there and then I epoxied that in there so this is really strong so that should hold the wings uh, you know um, I'm hoping uh, it's not gonna be a problem but uh, I'm just kind of mitigating some risk here um, as far as support goes. So I'm still working on the outside. Uh, still some minor imperfections that I'm still working on. You know, and taking my time on it, I'm not really in a huge hurry because I have a lot going on with the cockpit. Um, if you need to cut this pipe, I, I don't know if um, you guys have a good solution for it, but I struggled with it for years and, and I used, uh, now I have all this piping you know obviously that I keep around and it's different thicknesses and when you cut it there's a couple ways you can cut it I mean you can obviously you can use line pliers uh, line, lineman's pliers which is going to crimp the end it's going to screw it all up uh, even if it's small and thin it's still going to crimp the end um, I have these cutters 
which go, you know, the pipe goes in and you turn it around and around, but the problem is it crimps the end of the pipe, number one, um, on the inside. And sometimes the pipe is too small, so if I have a small piece, I can't turn this. You know, it's, it's really hard to turn it with a small, unless I put pliers on here, and then I mess up the pipe. So, and then there's the thicker one for like the half inch brass pipe. Um, same thing, just on a larger scale. So I found a chop saw. There was a sale at Micro Mark over the holiday in the U.S. They have a sale on, uh, I think it was Memorial Day. Might have been 4th of July, I can't remember. But um, yeah, it was Memorial Day. So this thing um, will will chop uh, through metal, and you can clamp the pipe in here, and you can actually miter it, um, and it's, it's heavy duty. I mean, this thing cuts through like butter, and it cuts the, the, the pipe clean. Uh, you might have a little bit of burring on the, you know, on the outside, which you can just sand off with sandpaper, and you get a nice clean cut. I should have bought one of these like like 10 years ago but um, they weren't the ones that I saw weren't weren't as good as this Th this thing is, is is really nice and I'm hoping it lasts for a long time I don't know about the blade but it's been cutting through metal really really easily and it's making my life a lot easier so uh, for me it was well worth the expense I think it was maybe 120 bucks I can't remember Micro Mark tends to make pretty good stuff, so I trust their stuff. It seems to run fine, and uh, I'm really happy with it. So if you're looking to cut a lot of pipe, if you're doing like a lot of um, scratch building and pipe work, and you need to cut clean, um, this is not a bad option. All right, so enough about the wings. I am working on the cockpit, and I have some parts made up. I think I have most of them made up. I think uh, I have a couple that I still need to do, but I am going to um, show you what I have done so far and how I did it. Now these SMDs, I'm using SMDs for a lot of this lighting because they take up little space. They're very bright. There's all different sizes you can buy. Okay, now if you look online, you'll see a uh, nano size, you'll see um, a bunch of different sizes. I have, um, these are wide angle, these are bigger, these are bigger SMDs. I buy all of, all of my SMDs pre-wired, meaning they have a resistor. All you have to do is hook up a power source. The problem is, these guys, most of the time, come with a really, really thin wire. And they only give you about two millimeters worth of wire to connect to. So you have to kind of strip this wire off. And it's really thin. And I don't have wire trimmers that are that thin. So uh, I'll show you uh, how I do it. But there's a, there's a easy trick. You can strip this right off and uh, hook them up. Um, so what I used was um, different different types here. So I have... These are from Lighthouse LEDs. These are the ones with the really small wires. Um, if you buy them from Model Train Software, they're nicer LEDs, meaning they have they're easier to work with. They have um, wire hooked up that's kind of a twisted pair wire, and you can strip this a lot easily or you don't even have to because there's like a half an inch of exposed wire on these already and they have a more tensile wire it's it's easier to run these um, I just I like these a lot better they're more expensive um, but they're they're really really great LED or uh, SMDs and um, I never have a problem with them so for me they're worth the expense um, so I used all of those. Let me try and hook this up. I'll show you what I did with the. This is actually the back panel. I didn't strip this wire yet, so this is going to be tough. 
All right, so hopefully you can see this. This is the back. It's the back of the uh, Tie Fighter, the back wall, and I have a red light, a red light, and a white light, and I have some parts here that I have to finish. Um, this is actually not completely accurate. The these pieces here should be lit up, not these, but I wanted uh, a little more light and a bigger, uh, you know, bigger area to kind of light up the cockpit. So that's what I have for the back wall. I still have some finishing work to do on that. And if you look inside the cockpit, the main focal point of the Vader tie in A New Hope is these red panels. He has these, like, there's, like, red panels all over the walls. There's, like, maybe, like, six or eight of them. I wanted to recreate those. So what I did was I had printed some... There's one of them, and there's, I think there's like five or six different designs that I made, and I had made these, printed them, and then on the inside I put a red lens, which is um, printed from transparent red filament, and then I put an SMD on the back to light it up as uniformly as possible, and I think it looks pretty good. For each one and they're going to go on the walls then there's some other tiles that I made that aren't lit that will go on the walls as well um, so that's my plan for the cockpit as for the Vader cockpit situation um, here's my Vader and he's glossed over. I haven't finished uh, detailing him yet. Interesting thing is, I'm looking at episode 4 Vader, and he doesn't have any lit up panels on his chest. He has them on his belt. So, and there's also green, there's a green switch. I don't know, maybe maybe I'm confused, but there's, there's a green switch on his panel and not a blue switch. So, I, I don't know. But that's the way I'll do it for a new help. I even put, like, um, red clear uh, paint in his eyes because in that version he has uh, in that mask he has a, like a red tinted uh, vision whatever lenses um, here's the inside of where he's gonna sit now these pipes I haven't finished the steering mechanism yet so he's gonna sit here and these pipes will join up with the steering mechanism and you know, he'll obviously have hands um, once I get the steering mechanism figured out so I can line him up. So he's sitting in there, and uh, this is going to go into the bottom of the cockpit, and then I have other stuff, and here's the back. So I'm working on the walls to go around that, and also figuring out how to hide all the wires for the red panel lighting and all this other stuff. So that's what I have going on for the cockpit. Um, one more thing I'll show you is for the SMDs, if you need to strip this wire, like I said, it's extremely small gauge wire, okay? Now if you buy SMDs on eBay or something like that, maybe they'll have this, um, like I said, the Muddle Train software ones, are, you don't need to do that because they're, they have exposed wire. But if you run into the fact that, you know, you have to strip some really, really small gauge I'll show you how I do it, and it's a lot easier than trying to um, use uh, wire strippers. So I'm at my soldering station. This is a weight. It's actually from a scuba um, belt um, that I use to uh, solder, use as a soldering base for some of this stuff. Um, works pretty well. Any kind of flat surface, you have a brick laying around or something like that, uh, that works. So this really thin gauge wire I was telling you about, so th this is uh, my soldering iron at about 580 degrees, and I'm just going to kind of put this on here and just drag it across the wire, and it takes that coating right off. 
that's it that's all I have to do I don't have to worry about trying to snip because I, I don't have I don't have wire trimmers that are gonna uh, wire strippers that are this small and are gonna reliably take off this coating so that's the best way I found to do it, it takes like two seconds and then I have uh, about three quarters of an inch of exposed wire for the SMDs that I can use to uh, hook them all up this is the top uh, top hole and I had already pa I painted this um, and masked the inside and I had taken out the upper canopy sections because if you look at Vader he's you know there's you can see the star field in the back so that that's transparent plus I wanted to be able to see in the cockpit um, I don't know if that's actually a good idea or not but we'll see what happens uh, so the color I used to paint this I primered it a couple of times with black and then I primered it with gray and then I put a coat of um, Archive X um, this is the most accurate paint for the uh, original uh, trilogy models at least and uh, it's just damn good paint so I like using it it's um, actually a combination so hopefully I'll get this right so I, I contacted the um, Archive X guys, and they told me that they matched the A New Hope Stormy Sea and the ILM Stormy Sea um, to Hero TIE Fighters. And over age, the models, you know, the paint lightened and stuff. And that's the ILM, that's the A New Hope Stormy Sea. It's a little lighter. Then they matched the ILM Stormy Sea to a canopy uh, paint chip. Um, from one of the uh, original um, hero ties so they're a little bit different one's more blue and one is more gray so I combine them um, I mix them I'm getting a really good result here uh, it looks like it's a bluish gray um, as you can tell I'm not sure if the lighting is going to uh, reflect but that's the wing primed in gray and that's the blue um, on my upper hull so that's what I plan on using for probably all three of my TIE fighters that I'm making um, the color looks really really good and um, I like the way it lays down it's it's uh, this is only one coat over primer and um, it, it's really sitting nice it looks fantastic so I don't see any reason to uh, make any adjustments there. Uh, let me show you what I have going on with the cockpit. Okay, so here's my bottom hole. I have my green ultra fast flashing LEDs mounted in here. I reseeded this part. I didn't like how it was fitting, so I actually took it out and I repositioned it. Um, here's my back panel that I had shown earlier and here's these walls that I had made to hide actually they've twofold I'm gonna be able to put my lighting triangles on here and run the wires behind and also they will hide the seam between the top and the bottom hole if you look inside the cockpit I just have to reposition them then there's the bottom piece which I had shown that's going to go in and everything should come together hopefully and um, I can hide my wiring there's a lot of wiring going on if you see behind here the idea is to stuff all the wiring behind this back wall and uh, hook it up to the power source under this bottom section here so the power source is coming in it's a um, I think I explained before it's an 8 pin female connector I have a temporary base you can see the uh, 8 pin male connector which is screwing into the bottom of the ship so all I have to do is align those pins make them the same color wires and um, it should get the power it needs. It's pretty simple. I just have to figure out how to mount the 8-pin um, 
mail connector to my base because this is temporary this is just something I put together for uh, kind of just you know working on it and uh, getting it uh, assembled and then I'll have to figure out what the final base is gonna look like I have an idea and I'll show that in the next part because I'm already working on the base and I'll show you what it looks like stay in attack formation